This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. It's a new year, so what better time to dig into your new skills or get inspired by their expert-driven classes? I've used it both to expand skills I've already have some working knowledge in, like infographic animation, as well as discovering new areas like professional photo editing. As it's a brand new year, why not start with Thomas Frank's Productivity Masterclass? Learning individual skills is one thing, but being able to manage your creativity and projects is a whole talent in itself that will save you from a whole lot of stress. Skillshare are offering you Chainbear viewers two months free premium membership so you can just binge classes to your heart's desire for two whole months for free. Just go to the link in the description to get stuck in. And now, the video. Hello, remember me? I took some time out for health reasons, but it's a new year, so let's slide into things with a short and simple video about understeer and oversteer. I've touched on these things before in the past, and I think most of us have a vague idea of these concepts, but let's get everything straight in one standalone video. Easier to focus on and look up later. Okay, so in track racing, like Formula One, when the track turns, you ideally want your car to turn too. A little insider secret there. You definitely want to turn when the corner turns. Not only that, but you want your car to travel as fast as possible through a corner. I know, it's mind-blowing stuff, but bear with me on this. So we've spoken about racing lines before. So for this corner here, let's assume you want to drive this line through the track as fast as you can. The way the car does this is through the tyres, the only part of the car that makes contact with the track. The rear tyres are the driven tyres. The engine pushes all the output power through the tyres and the rubber in turn pushes back on the track to drive the car forward. So the car is being pushed onwards at the back via the rear tyres in the direction the car is pointing. The front tyres provide some very slight resistance when pointed straight ahead, just from friction against the road. But when turned, they push sideways against the track, which drags the front of the car to the side. When working together with the rear of the car being pushed forwards, and the front of the car being pulled to the side, the car will trace out a curved path, something like this. At slow speeds, like when you drive a normal car on the road or something, this is all pretty easy to control. You turn the wheels, the car turns and follows a path dictated by how much you've turned the wheels. However, when you're trying to go as fast as possible, as with all things motor racing, you reach the limits of traction and have to tow a fine line. Let's start with the front of the car. In order to turn to the right, the rubber of the front wheels has to push against the surface of the track. This is essentially the same mechanical setup as if you stood next to the car in rubber sole trainers and tried to push the car. The car will resist being dragged sideways, as all physical objects prefer to be doing what they were already doing and resist changes in momentum. If the resistance is too much, your feet will slide on the floor as you can't generate enough grip, enough traction, to hoof the car to the right. This is the same as with the tyres, if the car is going too fast for the corner, it has a lot of momentum in the forward direction, and will need a lot more traction to turn it through a tight corner. If the maximum grip between the rubber and the track isn't enough to handle that, the tyre will be dominated by the forward force of the car and slide away from the ideal line. This is understeer. You wanted the car to take a tighter turn than it could handle, and the car ended up turning in a more shallow curve. The front of the car lost grip and didn't have enough traction to turn in. Now to understand oversteer, we need to move to the back of the car at the driven wheels. These wheels are being turned by the engine and can be affected by whether or not the tyres and track have enough grip to handle the traction demanded of them. They also work to make the back of the car follow the front of the car through the turns. The front wheels do the work of pulling the car into the corner, but the back tyres then have to hang on, gripping the track to follow the dictated path. There's a lot of mass in the back of the car, what with the power unit being there, and thus it carries a lot of momentum. The inclination for this mass is to carry straight on, and the rear tyres have to grip the road to drag the mass back in line. If the car is going too fast, faster than the tyres can handle, the rear traction will exceed its limits, and the rear will start to slide away from the ideal line. This is oversteer. So understeer is when the front tyres can't hold on to the intended line, and oversteer is when the rear wheels can't hang on to the intended line. So to fight back against understeer, the driver might want to start steering a little bit less to give the tyres a turning angle they won't slip against. It also helps to try and slow the car down and come on the power a little bit later. This results in a wider line out of the corner and a slower speed. Oversteer can result in the car completely spinning out of control. To counter the back end sliding out, the driver will want to drop the power and steer out of the corner. 
This should help bring the front end back in line with the trajectory of the car and straighten it up. As with understeer, the result can be a reduction in speed and a wider path through the corner than intended. If you saved it, at least you didn't crash. The fastest way through a corner is just on the limit of how much power your tyres can handle. Finding that and holding that through all manners of corners and conditions is what separates you from the rest. Now you may ask, what about rally cars? Especially the old rear wheel drive cars, those things slide through every corner and that's oversteer, right? How is that fast? Well, rallying is a different beast that I won't go into too much detail here, but rally surfaces are often a lot less grippy than race tracks. They are dirt, mud, gravel, snow, very slippy stuff and very tricky to generate traction. In these cases, it can be faster to try to hang onto the momentum and slingshot sideways through a corner. But how does this work? Well, if you imagine your car sliding through a corner, as the car is pointed inwards, you can use the driving force of the car to push the car into the apex, tighter into the corner. You're literally steering with the driving wheels. So the car's momentum wants to go onwards, but the driven wheels are pushing it inwards. Now you don't see F1 cars doing this in the rain, as the way they are weighted and sprung means they are much more on a knife edge when it comes to spinning. You can hold the slide on a rally car, but F1 cars really want to snap out much more easily. Plus, F1 tyres are not designed to be sliding against surfaces, so you'll knacker them out too. And that's the difference. <laughs>